Celtics on this last Sunday of 2023. This morning's personal meditation, and yet I decide every day to set aside what I can do best and attempt what I do very clumsily, open myself to the frustrations and failures of loving, daring to believe that falling, failing in love is better than succeeding in pride. Good morning once again. And if you're visiting here this morning, there's a sign, a guest, guest book or visitor's book in the narthex. Please join with me in our call to worship. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly be beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Please stand as you're able and join me in hymn number 31, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
be seated. This morning's call to confession. Our Lord and Savior came to this world as a gift for all humanity. God already knows the best of us and the worst of us. When we confess our sin, we're not surprising God. Rather, we're humbling ourselves and changing our own hearts to see and know that we need God. As we confess our sin together and then in the silence, know that you are loved by God and have God's great gift of grace with you always. Please join with me in our unison prayer of confession. Jesus, we receive your blessings and pray for the Holy Spirit to make them real in our lives. Renew a right spirit within us, a spirit that knows our deep need of your grace, your friends, living God. Soften our hard hearts with a gift of tears. Help us mourn our brokenness and the brokenness of our world. Generous Savior, you help fill each person with gifts, talents, and strength. Open us to our meekness so we may gladly surrender them to your authority and discipline. In our hands, they are often weapons. Bread of life, sour every false and destructive appetite. So we may hunger and thirst for righteousness alone, a right relationship with you, a right relationship with others, a right relationship with ourselves, a right relationship with your creation. Suffering one, break our hearts as yours is broken. In the breaking, create in us clean hearts, pure hearts, undivided hearts, hearts ready to make peace, hearts ready to suffer for justice, truth, and the common good. Hear the good news. Hope that does not, does not disappoint us, for God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us in baptism. Believe this good news and give thanks. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. It's still Christmas week, so when you get some good presents, you want to share them with other people. If you get, if you feel the joy and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, I invite you to share it with those and the people around you. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you.
Thank you, Linda. Always makes me wish I would have uh, stayed with my lessons after third grade. <laughs> Um, this morning's prayer for illumination. Please join with me. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning's first reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 21 through 38. Jesus is named. A week later, when the time came for the baby to be circumcised, he was named Jesus, the name which the angel had given him before he had been conceived. The time came for Joseph and Mary to perform the ceremony of purification as the law of Moses commanded. So they took the child to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it was written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be dedicated to the Lord. They also went to offer a sacrifice of a pair of doves or two young pigeons, as required by the law of the Lord. At that time, there was a man named Simeon living in Jerusalem. He was good a God-fearing man, and was waiting for Israel to be saved. The Holy Spirit was with him and had assured him that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's promised Messiah. Led by the Spirit, Simeon went into the temple. When the parents brought the child, Jesus, into the temple to do him what the law required, Simeon took the child in his arms and gave thanks to God. Thanks be to God for this, his holy word. The second reading today is a classic, Matthew 25. It's on page 807 in the Pew Bibles. I'm going to be reading from my study Bible because I broke my glasses in Tennessee this week and I got my Walgreens specials on, so the print's a little bigger. So it might be a little different, but the, the gist of everything is the same. This is Matthew 25, verses 35 to 46. I'm beginning to think that go from 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on the throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will gather before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger invite you in, or need clothes, or clothe you? When did we see you sick in prison, or go visit? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of those, the least of my brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he'll say to those on the left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devils and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. For I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick in prison, and you did not look after me. The will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes? He will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you do for one of the least of me, for one of the least, you do that 
for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. May God be thanked and praised for the reading of his holy word. Thanks be to God. Well, it looks like we got another 13 hours or so, but we made it through another year. Another flip of the calendar, another trip around the sun, as the saying seems to be a more update phrase. Another 525,600 minutes for all you Broadway musical fans, which is going to be a little longer this year because it's a leap year. Is anyone excited about it? Or is it just, <sighs> Barry Manilow was saying, it's just another New Year's Eve. And you know, for years I've said that with a sigh. I recall last year when I did the Christmas and the New Year's Eve service, and it seems every week after, like last year, every week, every, um, the week after Christmas, it seems like every minister in the world takes off. And there aren't enough subs to go around. But I recall saying how New Year's is just another day to me. You know, if you're broke on the 31st, you'll be broke on the 1st. If you have the flu on the 31st, you're going to have it on the 1st. If you're a jerk on the 31st, you'll probably still be a jerk on the 1st. And if you got tired of hearing me talk on the 31st, I don't think you'll like it on the 1st either. But why is New Year's thought to be some magical day? I mean, maybe because New Year's, I mean, I was working for years on every New Year's, so it didn't seem like much to me. And I kind of ignored making a holiday about it till this year. If we're going to use the calendar to measure progress, well, I'll give in. It's a good jump off point, I guess, well known to everyone. But what can you progress on? I'm sure we're all at one point, and maybe we've forgotten how many times we started the first few days of January, planning on doing things like giving up smoking, stop swearing, getting better organized, losing weight, maybe even reading the Bible more. Only well, come down to last week in January and say, uh, I guess not this year. Uh, the joke was that I was going to open up a gym called Resolutions that after two weeks turns into a bar. Psychologists say most of these resolutions are forgotten by then. And like Simeon and Anna, I say Anna, not Anna, because that was my little Italian grandmother's name. Well, I'm old too. I get set in my ways on some things. I mean, I'm still learning, but there are times when I seem like just a grumpy old man. And my wife and daughter are here, they'll probably agree to that. I'm used to things a certain way, but I also want the point where I say to myself, well, how do I want to live now, now that I'm old? How do I want to live? How do you want to live? What changes would you make if you knew they'd be successful but didn't know how long it would take? We don't like waiting. I mean, every Advent season sounds like waiting. I'm like, oh, gosh, I mean, if we were the ancients, waiting for prophecies to be fulfilled, you know, it might take forever to the point where you might give up. And Simeon and Anna probably felt that way. I mean, they're for a long time praying for the light of the world to come. I'm sure it just got into a habit sometimes. But they persevered, knowing something good was going to come at the end. Scripture says both blessed Mary and Joseph, and I kind of wondered what all that means. I mean, I grew up when the blessing was always a priest going like this. And I, part of me was wondering, like, what does he mean? What is this happening? So, of course, being in the 21st century, I looked up Google and, like, what is a blessing? Is the acknowledgement that you are appreciated, seen and appreciated, thanking God for your existence and asking God to protect and guide you? Well, fair enough. And although they're excited about the Messiah's birth, they have some strong and heart-wrenching prophecies about the future. Now, I mentioned earlier that this is a leap year, and you know what that means. The Olympics. Now. Well, yes, well, it is the Olympics, um, and I'll be rooting for Team USA. But a leap year is also a major election year. And as it's been the practice the past few decades, the arguments just get tougher and tougher. People get uglier and uglier, dividing friends, dividing neighbors, dividing families. One thing about diets, someone said a diet isn't just what you eat, but what you feed your brain, what you feed your soul with. So I want to stay away from people talking elections. TV programs and social media, relatives, even people down at the local store who just talk about things, look to tick off people that you should be getting along with. I know there's some churches right in this county where the leaders will tell you 
who to vote for, and then bust your chops if you don't. And who you vote for is up to you, and I, you know, I really don't care who anybody votes for. I've always said to me, it doesn't matter who's in charge. You still have to conduct yourself in a certain manner, in a certain way, not grumpy, angry, hardened, or judging, because I don't believe God cares how patriotic I am, how set in my ways I may seem, what I think about the Constitution. I don't think God even cares if I'm following the rules of the Presbyterian Church. He wants to know that I listened to Jesus from Matthew 25 and followed his instructions. See, I don't get to play God. I get to imitate Jesus. Jesus tells us pretty emphatically in Matthew 25 and even later when washing the feet during the supper what he wants. I mean, Jesus commanded us to love one another as I have loved you. But how did he love them? By training them, by guiding them, by inspiring them, by trying to understand them, but by showing confidence in them and respecting their dignity, showing them God's grace and mercy and peace, and then directing them to make disciples of all nations. When I was in political science class in high school, we learned that the country is the land, but the nation is the people. So to make nation, make disciples of all people, not necessarily countries. You remember back in the 80s, Richard Simmons and sweating to the oldies? Anyway, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Parkinson's is taking my voice away, but I used to do a really good Richard Simmons impression. Um, he was a weight loss coach or a, a life coach. He ran around in, in shorts and a tank top. Uh, he was very friendly to people and he was very um, positive. And I bought one of his books when I was younger, when I was trying to lose weight. Maybe the only thing I remember is that he said, the reason why people fail is the language they use. Like diet. He says, diet. How can you be successful with the word die in it? He says, we'll call it a live it program. You're changing how you live. And I thought, wow. In Matthew 25, which is one of the more modern chapters, Jesus points out, you clothe the naked, feed the poor, visit the prisoner. You're doing this with it to him. Now I'm a little confused because there's really not large prisons around here, and unless maybe some folks in, or naked people run around. But maybe people in their own prisons, the prisons of indifference or their past histories that they can't let go of, maybe it means helping a person that we really don't want around. Maybe it means reaching out to those who can't get out of the house if they feel imprisoned at home. Maybe it means looking for the best in someone and giving them the benefit of the doubt. Clothed the naked, except for some fights you might see in shop right at Walmart in their pajamas, pretty much everyone we see is dressed. But what about comfort? Can we help with the heat or the cooling in the summer? Or maybe just giving someone else a, who's walking a ride? And feeding the hungry. We can all relate to that, being hungry. I had a picture of a, a girl over in the Middle East, and the guy said to her, are you a Muslim, a Hindu, or a Christian? She says, I don't know, I'm hungry. And I was like, man, yeah, we can all relate to that. And somehow over the past, year, speaking of food, somehow over the past couple of years, I've lost 35 pounds. I don't know, I still look like I swallowed a volleyball, but I used to look like I ate a basketball. But I never noticed about it until some people who I hadn't seen in months said, man, you look like you lost weight. And I was like, really? I didn't consciously set out to do it, although many years I tried to consciously lose weight. But maybe that's how we do it. Change is slow. But eventually it changes. Do you have change in your life you want to make? I want to be more Matthew 25 this year. Not only to people in a global sense, but right here among us. I mean, it's easier said than done, so it takes work. And I have a terrible track record for following up on things. People in the session will know, I'll say something, I'll get back to you on Thursday. Next thing you know, it's two Thursdays later. But I'm going to need your help. Maybe we all need each other's help. Believe it or not, I look to all of you for inspiration, to keep me going, to keep my spirits up when it's easy to get down, to not give up. To not say I'm old, that my time has passed, but to see what else we can continue to do. See, Luke doesn't record Simeon's as saying, let me die now in peace. He writes, dismiss. 
which as I look at closely now, means send me out and then I'll come back later for more. You see, Simeon and Anna knew what was really going on, what was really at stake. So Jesus wasn't coming to overthrow the Romans. He was coming to show us the way. The enemy isn't each other, it's how we relate to each other. And if I'm going to fear missing out or losing out on something, it's going to be fear of missing out on Jesus' way of compassion and reconciliation and forgiveness and inclusion and in acceptance and in peace and nonviolence and generosity and justice. Swedish Prime Minister Goran Persson was quoted, it was going to be the personal meditation this morning, was quoted as saying, let our resolution be this, that we'll be there for each other as members of humanity in the finest sense. This calendar year, let's look to be where we're supposed to, to put away all that divisiveness and almost childish what about me attitudes and resolve to start off caring and sharing, developing a habit somehow of a live-it program where it just comes naturally. I'm going to need your help, not just in this sanctuary, but the congregation, but out in the rest of the world. See, unlike Simeon and Anna, we can't stay walled up in a temple. Going back to that Barry Manilow song, it's just another New Year's Eve. The next line is, let's make it the best. So friends, let's step up a livid program, sharing God's grace and goodness towards us, showing God's grace and forgiveness towards us. So next year, when we look into 2025, it's smile. Dismiss 2024, we're ready for 2025. Amen. So if we're going to say, God send me out, one of the favorite songs for that is 525, Here I Am, Lord. Let's all join.
please remain standing as we say together of the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. It's during this time uh, we will share our joys and concerns, starting here in the congregation. Does anybody have any uh, joys or concerns you'd like to share? Yeah, Phil? Yes, I have two local friends, uh, Mike and Sue Strubel, who both have COVID and ask for prayers for them. God of mercy, mercy hear our prayer. prayer. Janet? I, I received a text this morning from Rodney Walker, Pat's son, and it's a joy to know that she's home. She came home yesterday, but needs our continued prayers. They're trying to get some home health aids for her, and she'll be back with us as soon as she can get into her routine. So continued prayers for Pat Walker. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Anyone on Zoom? Well, I have one I'd like to share. Um, Eric, did you have one? Yeah, but go ahead. Okay. Um, so a, a friend of mine through work, he's a um, veterinary surgical resident at Ohio State, would like our prayers. Um, his name is Mitch and he is facing some challenges due to the politics, not only at businesses, it also happens at vet schools. So um, Mitch Sadowitz would like our prayers. Uh, I was just gonna say, uh, my, my son Ed and I got to see Betsy's parents this past week. We visited and it was a great time. Um, they looked a lot better, Betsy's dad looked a lot better than uh, I expected to see. So he looked very healthy and was happy to see us. And then, of course, tomorrow is Betsy's birthday, so. <laughs> I would say it's a slow week for joys and concerns, but in a way, that's a good thing. Let us pray. Gracious God, the, the calendar flips. Another year around the sun, another 525,000 something minutes. But your love for us just goes on and on and never changes. Help us to see the world the way you see it, the way you want it, the way your kingdom comes. guide us to do the things that Jesus instructed us to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit people who need our help. We're pretty much, as they say, we're all in the same storm, maybe not in the same boat, but we're all in the same storm. We all face some of the same things. And with that, we pray for Betsy's friend, Mitch, how things are changing at his job. It may feel out of control about it. We pray that things work out. And for Phil's friends who have COVID, and that doesn't go away. Maybe our attitude towards it does change. And God, we're pretty happy, we're very happy that Pat Walker is home. It was such a great thing to see her on a Christmas Eve, I think. I. I Walked home about 10 feet off the ground. Pat was in a good mood. 
And Eric reminds us too that it's great when your family can get together, your friends, and enjoy this occasion because it lifts our spirits. And we pray that we'll use those lift our spirits, or those lifted spirits to make something good out of 2024. That your kingdom come in the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Yes. We forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Holy Spirit is our daily guide. Through the Spirit's power, we make all our best and fully beneficial choices. It's through the Spirit that we know where God is leading us in all aspects of our lives, including our generosity. We give to our church community as a thankful and joyful response to the gifts God has blessed us with. For everything we have is from God. So let us be joyful givers today. Let us join together our unison prayer dedication. Great and generous God, use these gifts and offerings to bring your kingdom here on earth. As we give, transform our whole beings into fruitful followers of Jesus Christ. As we humble ourselves by giving our offer, may we make space to be more loving, joyful, peaceful, patient, kind, generous, faithful, gentle, and self-controlled. Thank you, O oh God, for your abundant gifts. 
In Christ we pray. Amen. Please be seated. You may recognize the last parts of the um, of that prayer came from the fruits of the spirits that I guess Pastor Catherine had done all during the the summer there. Um, time for uh, any opportunities or news that did not make the bulletin or that you have to emphasize, Joanne. Charlie? Uh, please take a look. <laughs> please take a look at your bulletin. Okay, uh, January the 2nd is coming upon us very soon. If you are a committee head, okay, please put together your summary report for this year so that we, so Sharon Beauvais can put it in the booklet for our congregational meeting. Uh, which is, by the way, January 28th, congregational meeting. But more importantly than that, at this point, if you're a committee head, get together your summary report and give it to Sharon Beauvais or email it to her if you're going to do it at home so that it can be part of the congregational booklet for 23. 23. Thank you. Uh, next Sunday, uh, I would imagine that we're going to be dismantling the Christmas tree and some of the ornaments uh, around the church. So if you could plan to stay a few extra minutes after church next Sunday, uh, we'll do that. And many hands make light work. And it's a great opportunity to uh, help. Thank you. Phil? No. I'd like to thank Mike for delivering to us such a strong message. Good job there, Mike. Thank you, Phil. David, I don't know how to get on. Well, let's sing our last hymn, which I think is one of my top tens of all time. Walter? Ask Lois. Lois? Lois. Uh, Barbara Young is visiting her son, Brian, who had surgery this week. This is why she's not here today. And uh, we should have prayers for Brian. Brian Young. Brian Young. Let God mercy your brother. Keep, keep Brian, Brian Young, Barbara's son, in our prayers. It's about losing weight. I keep exhaling. It's just, don't you hear that? <sighs> Let's join in our last, well, like I said, it's one of my, I think, top 10 songs of all time, Joy to the World, number 40.
Linda knows how much I love when she modulates the last verse like that. Huh? Outside this morning when I came in, it said on the um, on the sign outside the church, it, it's one of those corny sayings, remember, from singing that song, but let there be peace on earth and let it begin with us. As corny as it sounds, it, that's what we got to do. So let's go out to 20, 2024, feeling psyched that we can do it. And from Second, Second Thessalonians, may God, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loves us and by his grace gives us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage our hearts and strengthen us in every good word and deed. Amen. <laughs>